I hope, Brian, this is a frustrating process, not just for us, the viewers who don't have a live feed to this trial, but for you as well, who is literally there in the courthouse, not allowed to be in the courtroom. You're shuffled off with the rest of the press into an overflow room where there's a media feed that sometimes works. So take me to day two. Yeah, I mean, it is frustrating. Of course, we came all the way here. We want to be in the courtroom covering every little second, like with other trials that we go to. But we are in this uh, media room. Everybody is the media, the public. They're not allowed in the courtroom during jury selection. There is the video feed, um, but they, they take the feed away. They cut it off when they start asking the jurors more personal questions. And then they also cut it off sort of sporadically at other times. Today, again, they started talking about scheduling and, and other issues with the case. The judge decided to cut the feed. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't even know if they went to, went to lunch. Uh, the media and the public sort of just left in the dark. So the last we talked, I think you said that there, they had a pool of 1,800 people, which in the Boise area, I mean, it's a lot of people, but I guess it's not that many. It, certainly Boise's uh, not a tiny town. How are they doing in terms of weeding them out? Like, how many people are getting bounced right away? How many people sound like they could be great jurors? Yeah, so today it seemed like they uh, bounced more people. And you mentioned the questions were interesting. A lot of it's about bias. They're asking a lot of people if they've seen the story in the media. They keep asking about the Netflix series. Ha have you seen the Netflix series? Did you see a preview of the Netflix series? Have you seen the reporter chasing Lori Vallow uh, in Hawaii? Those questions come up over and over again. And then other really interesting questions. Uh, they asked the jurors a couple times, uh, you know, in a bank robbery, would you blame the getaway driver as much as the actual robber? Uh, they asked several jurors, you know, if a kid steals a cookie from a cookie jar, but you didn't see it, but you see all the crumbs around the jar, can you still say that kid did it? So obviously, mm. you know, try to figure out reasonable doubt here, trying to feel out uh, the, the way these, these potential jurors think. Sure, direct evidence, circumstantial evidence, and then also I, sa I can hear what you're saying. That's the whole conspiracy. You know, are you, because this is, a, you know, she's, a, she's in a conspiracy, the prosecutors allege, and so they want to know if the jurors can handle yeah. that and believe that a conspirator is just as bad as an operator. But you've had a little bit of help just in terms of, you know, talking this out with people that you're working with. The, the press is kind of operating as a group because you're kind of all stuck together in, in one big room. We have had help. Everybody gets to know each other. The frustration um, everybody sort of has together. I actually want to bring in Lauren Mathias, a host of um, Hidden True Crime podcast. Uh, you know, we all kind of sit next to each other. I mean, it is sort of a weird situation, sort of being kept in this room. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, they have like cookies and coffee for us. They do and, have coffee. You know, yeah, yeah people are, are mingling and, and we're, we're, we're all trying to, to watch and listen. And it's... Uh, it's hard. Some people have better views than others, you know. Some people um, are hearing things others don't. It's kind of a team effort, but it is difficult. And they're strict, Ashley. I told you earlier. I mean, no cameras allowed in the courthouse, no phone cameras. There was someone who took, like, a selfie or something earlier and, like, got in trouble from a deputy. So they're, they're very, very strict. Is it, can I ask you guys, is anybody else other than me blowing a gasket at this like extraordinarily secretive process? Again, I, I understand what the judge is trying to do, not create a circus, but that's, you know, there, there is a very heavy hand here and it really feels like this is secret justice. So the rest of the press as angry as I am? It's frustrating and it's just different. I mean, for example, you know, we wanted to get Lori Vallow coming out of court. You can't see her, but the car leaving. So our photographer, Luis, sets up and they say, absolutely not, can't have the camera here, can't be positioned, you know, even though it's outside. The rules are strict. It's very, very strict and the rules are strict. And even at one point, she was silhouetted, uh, Lori Vallow Dable was silhouetted sort of this morning on her camera angle. She's already, it's already a far away shot. And so I know the one reporter asked if we could get a curtain behind so that she wasn't shadowed. And then they said, well, there are no curtains. You know, I mean, well, can, can we fix this problem? I yeah. mean, it's just on and on. Yeah. And you don't know if the audio, as you say, is just turning off or if they're you know, on accident and you need to report it or if, oh, no, they're just turning it off once again so we can't hear anything. Yeah, and, and I like to remind people that, you know, boo-hoo the press, but we are the press, like the, the people 
are the press. We're the eyes and ears for the people. And so they're shutting out the people. They're not just shutting out the press, they're shutting out the people. And the people are paying this tax bill to the tune of millions. So listen, Brian Enton, Lauren Mathias, thank you so much for struggling through it and keeping up, uh, you know, keeping up uh, the details for us. We appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.